Hey, what's up everyone? April here. Welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be continuing our learning by seeing what we can learn from that Power Apps Wordle application I've been recreating. Last week we touched on my design process and this week we're going to be talking about working with Power Apps collections. Collections are a way for us to work with a group of information like tabular data inside of our Power Apps locally. I'll break down what they are and how we can use them coming up. Let's first start by understanding what collections are and where you might want to use them in Power Apps. Collections are a way to store a group of similar data locally in memory inside of your Power Apps applications. So we know in Power Apps we can go in and we can add all of these different data sources. I can click add data here. I can search for say SharePoint. I can add in data from my SharePoint list or libraries. I could search for SQL Server. I can add data from MySQL, SQL Server on Azure. And I can even add Excel data. All these data connectors that we have, we could insert tabular data or even non-tabular data from different connectors inside of our Power Apps applications. But when we're pulling those connectors in and consuming that data, the data is stored there on whatever service we're consuming it from. What if we want to store some data locally in memory power apps? What do we do then? Well, that's where collections come into play. Now, when we talk about storing data locally, you might be wondering why we want to do that. I've talked about this on my channel before when using variables. We have the set function in PowerFX and Power Apps, and we have the update context function as well with PowerFX. Those allow us to store local variables. Variables are meant for really just a single item of information. Collections, adversely, allow us to store a group of information or tabular type information. So it can be a collection, a variety, an array, whatever you want to call it, of objects. Where you might want to do this is if you're loading static data. So in the case of my Wordle application here that we're using as an example to demonstrate some of these concepts, I might load into a local collection all of the five letter words that I want people to guess because that data is never going to change. I'm not going to modify the five letter words, the words that we have or the words that there are. And I'm probably not going to be adding or removing any of those five letter words. So that would be a good example. Some other use cases where you might want to store data locally would be maybe where you have a list of states or continents or cities, really static data that isn't going to change much in your application. You can preload that and store that in a local collection. We might also use this for data that we need to store in memory in the application, but never really needs to be written or saved anywhere. It only needs to be accessible and available in the application session that you're currently running. So again, in the case of this Wordle application, I, for example, if we run this, need to be able to tell when I click on each of these different letters on my keyboard, which letter I'm clicking and store that in local memory so that I can compare the word that was submitted to the word that we're supposed to be guessing and do that comparison. So if I put in a real word here, I need to not only store each individual letter click that I have, but I also need to store each guess for each row that I have. So this is a perfect use case for working with and using these local collections. So let's see how it works. To demonstrate this, I'm going to start with this keyboard-like functionality that I have built here. Now, I built this keyboard piece simply by going to the Insert tab and clicking on the Button object. So I've just created several buttons for each letter in the alphabet, plus a button to enter what I submitted, and a button to backspace and erase one of the previous letters that I submitted. So I've just went in and added several of these individual controls, and I did a little styling like we talked about in the last video. So I went into the button and I changed the color for the fill. I changed the border color and I adjusted the height and width and some of the hover colors and all of that. So that's how I got these objects on there. Now what I want to have happen though is when I click on each of these individual buttons, I need to store what letter was clicked. So to do that, I'm going to use collections. So if we click on one of these buttons like this letter for A, I can go to its on select property and you'll see here is where I am using a collection. To add an item to a collection, all you have to do is use the PowerFX function called collect, as you see I'm using here. This is going to expect two main inputs. So when you're adding an item to a collection, 
you need to first give it the name of the collection that you want to add the item to. Then you need to pass in the actual item details of the item that you're adding. And you see when I'm doing this that I'm wrapping it in an open and a closed curly bracket. So here, this allows me to map individual properties of the item that I want to add. So in this case, I need to store the actual text of the item, but I also want to store an ID so I can find unique letters, and that's what this ID is for. So I can do this mapping here, and this will go and add the data to the collection. And I simply just copy and paste this exact same code of the collect and put that on each of these individual buttons. So I'm going to get whatever text is in that button, and I'm using a nifty function that I really love called the self function, which allows me to get all the properties for the current item that I'm in. So it makes it really easy. I can just copy and paste this formula here in all of my buttons and not have to worry about changing anything because I'm not referencing the name of the individual control. I'm using that nifty self property. Now it's really as simple as that. This means that each time I click on one of those buttons, it's going to run this, it's going to find my collection called COL letters for collection, and it's going to go through and add these item details as a new record or new row inside of that collection. And I'm returning the results of that collection. You might've noticed if I play this again, as I type in these individual letters, it's showing here on these labels that I have above. So how that's working is if I look at these labels and I look at the text property, I do a lookup to that collection of letters that I'm adding to you from those buttons below. So that's kind of how it's all tying together. And now you might notice I have this backspace functionality with this button below where I can remove some letters. So let's take a look at that and figure out how we'll remove items from a collection. So if I look at this buttons on select. You see we have a very simple function called remove. So this is another PowerFX function. You just type remove and it also expects two different inputs. So you're going to pass it in the name of the collection where you want to remove an item or row from. And then you need to tell it the actual item that you want to remove. So in this one, I'm just going to use another PowerFX function called the last function. This allows me to return the last item in a particular collection and it will remove that for me. So I just say last and then the open parentheses, I put in the name of the collection that I want to remove the last object from. So that's all there is to it to remove items from a collection. So far we've looked at how we can add items to a collection using the collect function and remove using the remove function. Now another concept we have to understand when we're working with these local collections is how they function behind the scenes. So each time I'm clicking on one of these buttons, it's just adding the item to the collection. So even if I click the same letter twice, it's going to add another item and another and so on and so forth. Now when I do this, this data is persisting. So what I mean by that is if, say, I had a different screen in this application. So we'll just go and we'll add a new blank screen. So even if I move over to this screen when I'm running the application and then I move back, that collection data is there to stay. The only time that it gets erased though is when I physically exit completely out of the application. At that point, the collection information that I've stored there is gone and it would be clear and I would have to start over again. Now, because the data kind of persists like that, you wanna be sure that you're clearing it out if you need to start fresh at any point. And what I mean by that in this case with the game, so if I kind of complete some rows here of letters and words, as I finish a game, I want to actually completely clear out this collection of letters so that I can start fresh with a new game. So just indulge me here as I type in some letters here and try to guess whatever this word is. So I just completed the game. I did really horrible. I didn't guess it at all. But what I want to have happen now that I completed it is if I click this play again option, that needs to clear out all the letters because what's happening is those letters are what's populating what's showing up here on my individual labels. So if I just left that and started a new game, all that information would still be there. So how do we clear out this collection when we're ready? Well, if we look at this play again button, I'll show you how it's done. So here on the on select of the play again, you see I'm using first a function called concurrent. So here's a quick tip. If you're experiencing ever any performance delays in your application, consider using this concurrent function and wrapping some of your formulas in that because this changes the behavior of how your code is ran. So by default, when you're running code in your PowerApps applications, the code runs sequentially, meaning 
If I'm doing this formula here, it has to go and process before the next formula loads, and so on and so forth. You can change that behavior though if you wrap your formulas in the concurrent function and that causes the formulas that you have within it to run in parallel, therefore improving performance. So that's what I'm doing here because I want to actually clear out several collections that I'm using inside of this application. So I can clear out a collection by using another PowerFX function called clearCollect. This will completely wipe out a collection and you can either have it completely wipe out the collection or you can have it replace the collection with some totally different and new information. In the case of my application, I don't need to replace it with new information. I just want to blank it out so that there's no data in there and I can start fresh. So for that, I have to say clear collect. I pass in the name of the collection, which I want to clear. And then this is the important part. If you want to empty everything out, you'll just pass in this function called blank, open and close parenthesis, and that will give you a new empty collection. And when we start adding these collections like I have in the app, you might notice if we go over here into the left-hand side in our tree view and click on our data tab, that the collections you're creating actually show up as data sources. So these are all collections that I'm currently using inside of my Power App. So if I go to this new screen, we can use these collections just like we would use data from other data sources like our SharePoint list or SQL Server tables, Excel, and all of that. So I can add in, say, a gallery, and I'll just change the format here to be title and subtitle, and we'll see these collections that we have show up as options to choose from our data sources. So I can choose that collection of collection letters that we've been working with as my data source, and that can populate that information here. And I can point it to the text I want to show. Maybe I want to show the text and the ID. So if we go back and we start adding some items back into that collection, and we go to that other screen, now you'll see that this gallery, which is pointed to our collection of letters, is populated with all of that data. Now, I'm using these collections a ton in this world application, and there's so much more that we can do with collections. You can update rows in a collection. So rather than adding rows or removing them, maybe you need to edit a row that's already in there. We can do that. We can add new columns to our collections. We can take the collection that we have locally and take that data and do like a bulk process to add that data into a data source like SQL or SharePoint, whatever it might be. So many more things that we can do with collections. But for this video, I wanted to keep it simple and just introduce you to the concept, explain what it is, and show how to quickly get started. We can dive into some of these more advanced functionalities of collections in future videos. So I'm gonna be continuing this series on some concepts that we can learn from this Wordle application. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And if you just wanna get your hands on this sample and see what you can learn from it and start playing with it, I have made this available on the Power Platform Samples PNP GitHub repo. So I'll put the link here in the video description where you can go and download the app and start using it. I would love to hear your feedback on it. So I hope to see you soon as I continue this series and we'll dive into some concepts of creating custom themes, colorblind mode, pop-ups, and all of that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button and I'll catch you in the next video.